This is the most comprehensive YouTube video you'll find on a Japanese candlestick. So if you're someone who's looking to make a ton of money with trading, you're in the right place. In this full course, we're going to be talking about every single thing you need to know regarding these candlesticks, what they mean, and how you can make money using these Japanese candlesticks, just like professional traders are doing right now all over the world. So if you're new here, subscribe to the channel right now and hit the notification bell if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on any future courses that we release for free on this channel. Channel. Whenever we're looking at these Japanese candlesticks price charts, we usually see just a bunch of different lines moving up and down, and we see a bunch of different colors. And the question is, it's like, like, what does all of this even mean, right? And more importantly, how can we use these to our advantage to extract money from the markets consistently? And today we're going to be talking about all of that. And by the way, guys, right now I'm using a software called TradingView. Um, if you guys want to follow along, there's a link in the description. You can click on that. It'll pull up a chart just like this. But usually whenever we're looking at a chart, most people, for example, let's say you're trading on Robinhood. What most people see whenever they're looking at a chart is they usually see something like this. They, For example, right now I'm looking at Bitcoin, uh, BTC, USD. And whenever someone's on a Robin Hood, they would usually see just a line moving up and down, moving up and down. And they would kind of see where the current price is at. Now, for those of you that are looking at charts like this, I've got news for you, and it's not good. You guys are missing a lot of information about what's actually happening in the price action, and you're doing yourself a disservice by not using Japanese candlesticks. So if you are someone who wants to take trading seriously, we're gonna have to evolve and stop using these type of charts and start using Japanese candlesticks. So uh, on TradingView, you'll see at the top, this little area right over here, if you click the down arrow, there's a bunch of different charts that you can pull up. That's the uh, original line chart that everyone kind of knows and loves. And then you would need to click where it says candle. So this is the candlestick chart that we're going to be talking about. And let me kind of explain and illustrate why line charts, you're missing a lot of information. So I'm on Bitcoin. We can kind of see that the price it went up and then, then it kind of went down and then it kissed this price, price right over here. It kissed around... Um, let's, what is it? 25,350. And then up here, the price kissed around 27,390. Uh, then we can also see that the price kissed the price of 27,460. That being said, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to actually get this little brush tool. I'm going to mark how far down the price went during these times and how high the price went during these times. And I'm going to toggle into the line chart and you'll notice it is it's not giving you the full entire picture so when i click this look the price actually went this high and this low but it's not showing it on the on the line chart so for example on this low it's showing the lowest the price went was 25,546 compared to 25,353 it's a big difference so hopefully just off of that, I've now convinced you to stop using those regular line charts and instead start using Japanese candlesticks. But more importantly, let's kind of go ahead and dissect exactly how these candlesticks work. Now, each individual candle that you see here, it represents the price movement during a specific period of time. What I mean is, whenever you're looking at a chart, you can toggle between various different time frames: the one hour time frame, four hour time frame, the daily time frame, weekly, monthly, and there's a lot more different time frames that you can kind of toggle between. So if I'm on the current one hour time frame, what this means is this one bar, this one candle represents the entire movement of what happened with the price during this specific hour. And you'll notice if you look on the right, it tells you how many minutes are remaining until this act this actual candle finishes. And once this candle finishes, a brand new candle will appear to the side of it. But up until that point, this one single candle will continue to move up and down as the price fluctuates. Essentially, each candle is telling you its own entire story. I want you to think of each individual candle as a war, more specifically like a tug of war, right? So. Think of it as the bulls versus the bears that are constantly pulling on the price, either wanting it to go up or wanting it to go down. Now, every time a brand new candle gets created, both sides of the tug of war battle start as equals, meaning the candle that you'll see is just a very thin line that throughout that time period will continue to grow up or continue to grow downwards. 
and that is the battle between the bulls and the bears. So both parties start at square one, and it's not just one person fighting against another person, it's the collective hive mind of thousands, if not millions of traders all over the world that are looking to buy or sell whatever asset that you're looking at. So it's the collective group pulling against each other and seeing who will win that war when the time comes to an end to create the next candle. Now, these Japanese candlesticks can be any colors. Uh, they can be white and black, sometimes filled in or hollow, or even red and green like this. If you're on TradingView, just, just simply change that. Just go to settings and go to where it says symbol, and then you can just kind of change the colors to whatever you like. So let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of a candlestick and actually dissect what each candlestick is actually telling us. So I've pulled up Euro USD. So first things first, Whenever you see candles that are red, that means from the point where the candle started to where the point the candle ended, that means the price has actually went down. From the beginning to the end, the price went down. If you see another red candle, that means the price continued to go down and continued to go down. It isn't until you see a green candle, this means from the point where the hour started, up until where the hour ended, that means the price actually went up. And again, if the candle is red, where it started, and then it ended down. And then where it started, ended down. And if it started down here, and it's green, that means it ended up. In this case, the price, I'll show you, you can kind of see on the right, the price was 1.06723, and then the price when the hour ended went all the way up to 1.06906. So green candles are bullish and red candles are bearish. But you might notice these little wicks, these little spikes towards the end of the candles. And pretty much what that means is during that hour, let's focus on this candle right over here. During this hour, if we know the red candle means it ended lower than where it started, the body of the candles, or in other words, this red rectangle area represents the exact point, the exact price where the, where the price started. And then these wicks up here and below, this represents how high the price ended up reaching within that hour, and then how low the price ended up reaching within that hour as well before finishing off where the body ended. So there are two parts to the anatomy of a candlestick. You're looking at the body or the wicks. So in this case, we know the price started here, went up a little bit, and then dropped all the way down before continuing back up and then finally finishing its story right over here. And the next candle started over here, and you kind of see it went up just a tad bit before plummeting back down and then before finishing off a little bit higher than where the lowest point during that hour ended, and so on and so forth, you guys get the idea. Now, most of the time, especially when you're trading with Forex, wherever the candle ended, so since this is a green candle, which means it ended up, usually that means the next candle will begin right where the previous candle left off. So this is a red candle, and it ended way down here, which means the next candle will pretty much most likely start where the previous candle ended, and so on and so forth. Now these wicks that you see here, these guys are extremely, extremely important. It's not just enough to understand where the price started, where the price ended. It is very important to see what actually occurred during that hour, because this way we'll understand the peak, the highest most point where the price touched or kissed, or the lowest point where the price had actually touched or kissed as well. We need to understand exactly what happened to make informed decisions on what the price action might be doing in the upcoming candles. Now, there are multiple candlestick types and these things have names to them. The names aren't really too important to kind of memorize, but you can if you want. But more importantly, it's important to kind of just digest and understand exactly what the candlestick stories are, 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 are telling you based on the shapes and the sizes of the candle. So I'll go ahead and draw some examples and kind of show you what the meanings of these different candlestick types are. So first things first, you can have candles that have no wick. Um, and obviously this can be either green or red. In this case, if you see a candle that doesn't have a wick, and if you see a candle that's super, super, super tall like this, this means it's a very strong bullish candle. On the other hand, if this candle was red, this would represent a very bearish candle, meaning a lot of momentum pushing down. 
And by the time it did end up at the bottom, there was no pushback, meaning it closed as low as it possibly could. It's a very bearish candle. And obviously, if it's green, it is bullish. Now, if you have candles that are not as tall, maybe a little bit smaller candles, and if you don't see uh, any wicks on these, these smaller candles do show a sign of bearishness. In this case, it's going down, but is this is weaker than a candle such as this. A longer candle shows a stronger push. A smaller candle shows a push, but it's not as strong. And then if you have candles with a wick, these tell a completely different story. So let me kind of explain what this candle is kind of telling us. So this candle, since it's red in this case, it represents, it shows that the candle started up here, went all the way up, which means since it started here, it went all the way up here. And at that point, this candle was in fact green. And then what ended up happening, the sellers started pushing back, sellers started pushing back and continued to push back until it finally closed below where it started. And then it closed as a red candle. So notice that the color can shift during the candle movement. So this candle specifically again shows it started here, was initially green, went all the way up here until the sellers came back in, pushed it back down and closed it red, closed it below where it started. And you can kind of see it was a small little wick below it as well. So what's the story of this candle? Story is candle started, the buyers were in control, and then the seller said, oh, heck no, we're not going to let you win. And we're going to push it right back down and closed it below where it started. So this is a very bearish candle as well. Next one down the line, you can have candles that have smaller wicks. And a smaller wick candle shows in this case, the price started here. The sellers pushed down a little bit. And then the buyers came in and pushed it all the way back up before the sellers had a little bit of more pushback and it ended up closing bullish this is a green candle but you see the ratio of body versus wick we have a large body and small amount of wicks this shows it's a very bullish candle in this case we have a large wick and small body this shows a huge sign of reversal and we can also have candles that have wicks on both sides and then the body is super 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 small this would be considered a candle that is indecisive the bulls and the bears are both pushing on equal sides and this one doesn't really have a bias too much whether it's bullish or bearish a candle such as this would be labeled as what's called a doji now you can have dojis in multiple different form factors pretty much what a doji is is the price started and ended at the same price level uh, throughout that whole hour but the price could have continue to go up or down during that hour. This is also considered a doji as well. The type of doji this is, because it has such a long wick at the bottom, this is considered a dragonfly doji. However, it is still a doji because the price started and ended roughly around the same price point. And notice I intentionally gave this candle a small little bit of body just to kind of show you guys and represent that it doesn't necessarily have to start and end exactly at the same exact pinpoint price point. Now, this next candle right here, this is also considered a doji. Again, this shows a sign of indecisiveness. So pretty much what ended up happening here, the price went up and down. It was very volatile during this price action. But at the end, whenever this candle closed, it pretty much closed roughly in the near area of where it started. Now, this type of candle, if you see mostly a strong body and barely any wicks or no wicks at all, this would be considered what's called a marabozu. These type of candles are generally one of the strongest bearish or bullish candles. This shows a sign of massive, massive, massive steam, massive momentum. So if this candle closed bearish or all the way down here, you tell me, it is a higher probability of the next candle going all the way back up or is it a higher probability that the momentum is going to continue to go in terms of probability since the momentum is so strong the next candle definitely has a higher probability of going down just a tad further now this next candle over here can be called either a shooting star or an inverse hammer even though the shape is the exact same for both of these two different candle types it is very important the location of the candle relative to the previous or past price action. Let me kind of explain what I mean. If, if the previous price action, if the previous candles were creeping up, going up and up and up and up and up until this candle approached, then this would be considered what's called a shooting star. I want you to think of a star 
towards the top of the sky and it's shooting downwards. However, on the other end, if the candle was towards the bottom of our price range and the candles are coming down, candles are coming down, this would be considered an inverse hammer. I want you to think hammers are heavy, so it's towards the bottom of a price range. So let me kind of explain what the story of this means. So you guys might look at this candle and see that it's green and automatically think to yourselves, oh, it's a bullish candle. It has a price action of potentially going up. However, as I mentioned earlier, this wick is extremely, extremely important and crucial. So the story of this candle, what's actually happening is the price action started here and then continued to go rally all the way up meaning it was a huge, massive, large green candle similar to this until the sellers kicked back in and said, heck no, we're going to push this candle all the way back down. And the price reversed and closed near the start. So even though this is a green candle, in reality, who had the last say? Did the buyers have the last say or the sellers? I would say the price pushed up and then the seller said, no, we're going to push this all the way back down. The candle reversed pretty much all the way. So in this case, this is a bearish candle as well, even though it is a green. This next candle over here, same concept of this previous one. This could be considered a hanging man or a hammer. Let me kind of explain. So if someone's hanging, which is a very morbid example, someone's hanging, they're usually hanging somewhere high, right? So this would be considered a hanging man if the price action was approaching it from the bottom and climbing upwards. On the other end, if the price action was up here and the price action was declining until you saw this candle uh, stick pattern over here, then this would be considered a hammer. Why? Because hammers are heavy and so they're towards the bottom of a price range. So just like this previous example, same concept. Look, this is a red candle and it's towards the bottom of a price range. The candles kept going down, 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 and down, and down until it reached this candle. But what ended up happening here? This is a red candle, meaning this candle went all the way down here, kissed the bottom of this wick until the buyers stepped back in and said, heck no, we're going to push this back up. So what actually happened to the price action? If we refine it a little bit further, the price went down, touched the bottom before pulling a U-turn and going back up. So even though this is a red candle, this shows a potential sign of bullishness. The buyers are potentially in control. So just a key tip that you guys must know is usually if you see some type of candlestick formation like this towards the bottom of a price range this shows a potential sign of reversal same concept for this one if you see the price action creeping up and you see a long wick at the top this shows a potential sign of reversal so the next few candles could potentially be be going down will this happen 100 percent of the time every time no it's all about probabilities but most importantly it is all about location 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 just like location is important in real estate it is also very important in price action trading as well now this next candle here same concept i'm just kind of representing that it could be a red candle or a green candle they both kind of represent the same thing but the question is of these two, which one is more bearish and which one is more bullish? Both these candles are representing the same thing, but this one is a little bit more bullish compared to this one, even though both of these candles in general inherently are bearish candles in general. Now, this candle right here, same concept. It started exactly where it ended. The price action swung up, the price action swung down. This would show a sign of indecisiveness. This next candle right here, this is what we call a spinning top. You see a small body, uh, small wicks on both sides. Think of it like a small little spinning top. It could be red or green. In fact, all these candles can be red or green. This shows, in this case, this candle is a little bit bullish, uh, but it's not too strong. It's not as strong as something like this or like this. Next candle here. Let me kind of explain the story of what happened to this candle. It's red, so you guys tell me. Think to yourself, where did this candle start? It's a red candle. Did this candle start up here or did this candle start down here? The answer is the candle, since it's red, that means it started higher than where it closed. So it started up here, pushed all the way down, and then it swung back up and then it closed over here. So even though this is a bearish candle in general because the body is quite huge, it does have a sign of potential reversal. So it does have a bit of buying pressure baked into it. So this would be considered a bearish candle in general, 
but we do have to keep in mind that there was a lot of buying pressure before the price action ended. So the same shape where it's a bit bearish, it's not, it's not the most bearish candle, but if I do one small little change, if I change it to green, this changes everything. This shows that the candle started here, was initially down and how it ended, the buyers completely came together, banded together and rallied it up, continued to push up, continued to push up, continued to push up all the way to the maximum height. So whereas if this was a red bearish candle, this was a little bit bearish, but in this case, if it's green, it's not just a little bit bullish, this is extremely bullish. Notice the shape is the exact same, but the story tells a completely different story. One being a little bit bearish to the other being extremely, extremely bullish. Now, these are all the different candle types that you can possibly encounter whenever you're in the markets. So just a quick little brief overview. I'll just kind of name a few of which ones are bullish, which ones are bearish, and which ones show a sign of indecisiveness. I would say this one is probably the most bullish. This is bullish as well. This is extremely, extremely bullish. This one is extremely bearish. This one is bearish as well. This one started here, went up, pulled all the way back down. This one is very bearish as well. This one's bearish. This one's bearish. This one's bullish. This one shows a sign of indecisiveness, indecisiveness, but it is bullish because the price started here, went down, and it continued to go back up. So it's kind of showing a sign of bullishness, even though it is a doji, even though it started and ended in the same exact spot. So this is still a bullish candle. I would say this is indecisiveness as well. And this one is a bullish candle, but it's not too crazy bullish either. Now, while single candlesticks are all fun and dandy, they're even more useful if you can combine them with their adjacent candle next to them to get a lot more information of where the momentum is gonna be moving. So let's talk about an example. So we see a green candle. This is a bullish candle. However, if we wait to see what the next candle is gonna be looking like, we will notice that this is a red candle which engulfs the first candle. This double dual candlestick pattern is what we call a bearish engulfing, meaning the second candle was bearish. The entire body engulfed the body of the first candle. You want to look specifically at the bodies. Now, contrasting this, if we look at the other pattern, something like this, this first initial candle was bearish, but the next adjacent candle was extremely bullish. So if this was a bearish engulfing, naturally this would be called a bullish engulfing. Why? Because the body of this candle engulfs the entirety of the body of this first candle over here. This candle here, or this pattern over here, this shows a potential sign of reversal. So if the price action, if the candles at one point were creeping up, and then these two candles appeared, there's a possibility that the next few candles can start going in the down direction. Same concept here. If the candlesticks were going down and you saw a bunch of red candles going down, and then when this green candle engulfed the red candle prior to it, this can show a potential sign of a re reversal because the next candle will start exactly where this candle ended and could continue to go up. So let me go ahead and delete all this stuff over here. Now, these are dual or double candlestick patterns, and if you want to go a little bit more advanced, we can combine three candles together to get even more of a story and kind of see what's happening with the candlesticks. So we see a green candle, and if the next candle that we see, if this one, if this body was taller than the first body, this shows that the momentum is either gaining or is the momentum being lost. What's the answer? The answer is the momentum is gaining. This candle is bigger than this one, so it's gaining steam. And if we see another candle right afterwards, which the body is even bigger in the same direction, they're all the same color, this shows a large sign of bullish pressure, a large sign of buying pressure in the up direction. So there is a possibility the next few candles can go in the up direction as well. So the bullish version is called three white soldiers. The bearish version, the ones that are going down or red, they're called the three black crows. So notate that in your notes as well. Now, another type of candlestick pattern, three candlestick pattern is something that looks like this. This one right here is called an evening star. And the opposite would obviously be called a morning star. So what's happening in this scenario is the body of the first candle was very bullish. 
The next candle showed a sign of indecisiveness. This could be red or green. And I'll tell you, this, this pattern would be stronger if this candle was red, but don't negate the fact that if it is green, you don't want to discard the fact that this is still a an evening star pattern. So in this case, what's happening is it's a very bullish candle. Then the next candle shows a sign of indecisiveness, whereas the next candle overtakes or engulfs the previous candle. And this third candle, it's a very bearish candle, would need to end at least at least 50% or more below where this candle started. So you think about the halfway point of this and, this, and if this candle ended below the halfway point, this would be a very good, decent sign of potential reversal where the next possible price action could continue to move down. So now let's talk about exactly how we use these to our advantage so we can find high probability entries to enter and not just blindly enter on the charts based on kind of what we see. So let's go ahead and go back to uh, Bitcoin, BTC, USD. So if you guys remember, towards the beginning of this lesson, I mentioned to you guys this line chart that you couldn't see the anatomy of the candlesticks, right? You couldn't really see exactly what's happening in the price action. So in this case, we wouldn't really have a real clear idea of what's going to happen to the price action just by simply looking at this. However, if we change it to a candlestick chart, this gives us a lot more information. So let's kind of talk about what we see here briefly. So first things first, uh, as I mentioned, this is a potential reversal candle, right? Because you can see what's actually happening. The price action in this case was creeping up higher and 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 higher until finally at one point, relative to the previous candles, this is roughly at the top and we see a long wick creating what's called a shooting star. This again shows a sign of potential reversal. So if you looked at this and you saw the price action was going up, then it came all the way back down the sellers were back in control. What ended up happening with the future price action, it continued to go down. And what do you see here? We see a small green bullish candle, and then we see a long red candle that engulfs the previous one, which shows a massive sign of reversal. So as you can see, after this candle ended, the next few candles were bearish as well. This could have given you a clear sign to enter a sell. And what ended up happening here? This candle was a hammer candle and that candlesticks continued to go up. This is a shooting star candle. The candles went down. This is a bullish engulfing. The green engulfed the red one which the candles continue to go, go up just a bit. And until you saw this green indecisive candle right here, which showed a bit of indecision. Now, as we continue to go down, we see a long wick candle, which means the candle started up here, pushed all the way down, and then the buyers came back in control and ended the candle right here. And what happened to the next one? The next one started here, pushed all the way back down, which showed a bigger sign of reversal, a st much stronger candle because the buyers were in control. And it, this would have been a decent sign to enter a potential buy. You can see the candles continue to push all the way up and up and up. This right here shows an evening star. Why? We see a green candle. Then we see a red candle. And then we also see a red candle as well, which engulfs pretty much all of these previous candles over here. Now, does this work 100% of the time every time? No, you're not supposed to use candles as the say all end all. In this example, this showed a potential sign of reversal and what ended up happening, the price continued to level out and continue to go down. So it's not enough just to blindly look at the candles and say, oh, this is a candle, I'm gonna enter a buyer or a sell here. We need to use other types of technicals, other clues that we see in the market that could give us a higher probability entry to enter a trade that'll go in our favor. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So if we saw the price action at one point started going all the way down here, and this was the lowest point that the, that the price action went, and then it pulled a U-turn and continued to go back up, this area, this section right over here, shows a potential area of where the price might react in the future. We're gonna label this as what's called a support zone or a zone of interest. I'll change this to a more neutral color. Let's just kind of use blue or something. And how we can use this area along with candlestick confirmations is, let me go ahead and enable this replay tool and kind of show you how this would work in action. As the price action is continuing to run, 
if the price ends up approaching this area again, we could look for a candlestick pattern, candlestick confirmation to give us the green light to potentially enter on this zone. Price went down, then it pulled a U-turn. You, you just saw it. This could be an area where you want to enter a buy. You would want to put your stop loss below the zone. You want to put your stop loss somewhere below the zone and you could enter your buy. However, this is a red candle, so it is still a little bit bearish, right? You guys remember where, where I mentioned this towards the beginning of the lesson? Still a red candle does show a sign of, of reversal, but the main key point is we first identified an area where the price might react. So if we wanted to enter the buy here, we could, actually over here, we could, whenever this candle ended, ensuring that the stop loss is below the, the zone. This is a little bit more aggressive. Or if you wanted to wait for another candlestick confirmation, let's say the next candle, and if this gives you a better green light, a more bullish signal to enter your buy, and if you were a little bit more conservative and you didn't want to enter on the red candle, and instead if you wanted to wait for the green candle, you can have a safer entry, ensuring your stop loss is below the zone, and then you would be off to the races. Now, one key pro tip I do want to give you for those of you that actually had the patience to stay to the end of this video. One thing is, I'll tell you, waiting for these candlesticks to close or finish, entering based on that is a little bit lagging. Why? Because these entries will start, in this case, only after the candlestick has finished, meaning you're going to have to wait until that whole hour finishes to see whether that candlestick ended bullish or bearish. So a pro tip, what I do, I look for other technicals to get a stronger entry. So in this example, I would enter on this zone as my first entry as long as I have other technical factors, other things I'm looking at the chart, other things I'm drawing, other clues I see in the market that give me a sign that this might be a possible area for a potential strong reversal. Once I have that identified and I have a high probability trade set up, I would enter my first trade at the zone depending on other factors that I see, not just looking at the zone by itself. And then I would be able to have a tighter stop loss. And in that case, I would be able to have a greater risk to reward ratio. Meaning, if I was willing to risk only $100 on this trade, I would lose $100 if the price ended up going against me. But in this case, I would gain five times that. I would gain around $538 if I won the trade. However, if I entered in a, in a way where I entered at the end of the candle, and I must have my stop loss below the zone to be safe, in this case, my risk to reward ratio would be basically only one. If I'm risking $100, the price ends up going down here, and if I get the trade right, I'll win pretty much $104 in this case, right? The risk to reward ratio is a little bit worse, but on the other side, it does give you a lot higher chance of the trade going in your favor. So if you prefer, a higher win rate over your risk to reward, definitely wait for the candlestick closes and wait for these different candlestick uh, patterns. Or if you are a little bit more aggressive and if you have a lot more experience in the market, maybe six months, a year, maybe two years or three years of being profitable in the market and you know your win rate and you are experienced, then you can start entering a little bit more aggressive entries only after you have been consistently profitable in your trading and this will allow you to get a lot better risk to reward ratio. And then what you can do, and then you can use these candlestick confirmations to enter what's called a second position. Then you can enter a, another buy because you already have this first buy already running. And then you can enter a second buy to double down on the position while making sure that the first entry is still definitely in profit. You'll notice the first entry is in profit, so it's a safe second entry, and now you'll have two trades, two positions running in the same direction, which you could essentially double your profits using one single trade idea. This one trade idea can give you double the profits compared to someone who only entered one trade. But you'll notice this top trade got me a risk to reward ratio of 2.7, while the 
previous trade, the first trade in this case, got me a risk to reward ratio of 15.76. So just know that using candlesticks, that's not a standalone tool. We're simply using these different candlesticks to supplement other different technical factors, other different variables that we see in the market to accentuate and give us a higher probability setup to enter these type of trades. And I extensively cover every single technical factor and things that I use in my personal trading every single day in our private mentorship program. It's not for everybody. It is paid. This is for people who do want some handholding. This is for people who do want some mentorship, who do want some accountability. Maybe you want me looking at your charts, seeing what you're doing right, see what you're doing wrong, and want that want the entire blueprint of exactly what I do, exactly how I look for high probability entries in the market every single day. So for those of you that are interested in that, there should be a link in the description below. You can find more information about that on the website at the link below. Again, it's not for everybody. It is invite only. So you're going to have to go through an interview process to see whether you do qualify or not. But other than that, what I would definitely say, you guys must go through your charts, look at the different candles, try to identify as many of these candles as you can, mark them down, write them down to get a feel of the different candlesticks and see what happens with the momentum as the price action continues. So what did we cover today? We covered number one, the difference between a silly line chart and candlestick charts. We then explained the different anatomy of the candlesticks. Then I showed you the various different single candlestick patterns and what they're called. And then we looked at the double candlestick patterns. And then we looked at the triple candlestick patterns. And then I've shown you examples of how you can use them to identify areas to trade potentially in the market. And lastly, I've given you pro tips on what you can do to enhance your risk to reward ratio and what you can do to double down on trades based on technicals and different candlestick patterns. So if you guys found all of this information helpful, it would mean a lot if you leave a comment down below with whatever questions that you have, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. And if you like the video, make sure you hit like on the, on the video. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, what are you waiting for? We cover topics just like these and a lot more advanced topics throughout the next following weeks. So subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell if you haven't hit that notification bell yet. That being said, take care guys and I'll catch you guys in the next video shortly.